Hi, Russ of Aquarimex here. It's finally time to awaken my garter snakes from brumation. For those of you who may not have heard the word, brumation is the term used to refer to the dormant period of reptiles during the cold seasons of the year. Now, not all pet snakes need to brumate to live healthy lives, but for snakes living in areas where the weather does get cold, brumation is a natural aspect of their lives. And not only that, breeders often see a significant improvement in fertility when snakes brumate. Uh, my three red-sided garter snakes, Houdini, Rufus, and Ruby, were produced by Don's garter snakes, but they are descended from a Montana locality where, needless to say, it gets very cold. I was debating whether or not to have them brumate this winter, but they kind of decided for me. They began to be much less interested in food, which is not normal for them, and they spent more time hiding. I can take a hint, so I started the brumation process. After a feeding on November 1st of last year, I stopped feeding the snakes for a few weeks to allow their digestive systems to clear out completely. A cold snake can't digest its food, so any food left in the digestive system could rot and pose serious health risks. So after they had remained at normal temperatures without food for a couple weeks and were completely cleared out, I began to lower the temperature inside their enclosure. Basically, I just turned off their basking lamp, which normally provided a hot spot of around 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Without the lamp, the temperature in the enclosure was basically room temperature, so they had another couple of weeks to acclimate to the slightly cooler temperatures. And during this time, I was working on setting up a brumation station. A suitable brumation enclosure should be dark, should be cool, should be above freezing, of course, but below 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, at first, I thought there, were, there was this dim spot on a basement windowsill. I set up a bin and began taking temperature readings over a period of several days. But the temperature in the enclosure fluctuated between the high 50s and the low 60s Fahrenheit. So pretty cool, but not quite cool enough. And one of the dangers at, of brumation at too warm a temperature is that the snakes can remain a little too active and burn through their energy storage too fast and essentially starve. So my next thought is that I would set something up in our garage. We have an unheated garage and it stays a little warmer than outside, but it still gets very cold. Quite a bit below freezing multiple times during the winter. So I had to figure out a way to take advantage of the cold temperatures in the garage while still protecting the snakes from extreme cold. And that's what I did. But before I show you my snake's brumation station, I want to thank my patrons at Patreon. Your support means a lot. Without you, I couldn't do what I do on this channel. I'm pleased to note that there are several new patrons listed here since the last time I posted a Friday video. If you'd like to help for as little as a dollar a month, please click the link at the end of the video. So now, let me show you how I put together my snake's brumation enclosure. I started out with a low range thermostat and I'll put a link in the description to this particular one. A lot of the thermostats that you get for reptiles only go down into the 60s Fahrenheit and I needed this to go down much lower than that. And so this works, it goes down to actually below freezing. So it works fine because I want to maintain a temperature for the snakes uh, right around the mid 40s to the low 50s, something like that. And so I ended up setting the temperature at 55 degrees to start out with, and then I gradually lowered it down to about 50 over a period of a few weeks. So I had that plugged into a heat mat that is inside this bin. The bin, by the way, uh, has been drilled for ventilation in a couple of spots, and I also drilled a hole uh, to admit the electrical cord for the heat mat. I put a blanket and a few towels. Now, you never want to uh, you know, set up anything related to a thermostat or a heat mat and just start using it immediately with your animal if you can possibly avoid it. Uh, what I did was uh, set this up and, and tweaked it over a period of time so that I was comfortable with the temperature that uh, I was getting inside. And that's why I, used, I ended up using two towels and, and one blanket after some trial and error over a period of several days. And then this is actually uh, the same style I used for their for their nursery bin when they were younger, but it's it's a different one because this one is, has less ventilation. Um, both the outer bin and this one have a little less ventilation. They're both ventilated, 
but much less so because you don't want to um, allow the humidity to escape too quickly and you don't want to allow the uh, temperature you know to, to fall or rise too quickly so there's some ventilation here and there's some ventilation on the sides of this bin and that's the same for the outer bin as well now in here I just had leaf litter and I kept one side much more damp as you can see the condensation on the lid um, one side is much more damp than the other which allows the snakes to find a damper and a drier spot this spot over here is much drier and uh, that was based on Steve Bull's uh, garter snakes or website I'll put a link here you can check that out he has a lot of experience with brumation and garter snakes and he mentioned that that is a good way to keep them hydrated comfortable and here is the heat mat that I used um, this is the one from the bean farm um, I like these a lot I have several of these put the probe right there taped it here and that made sure that the snakes could, did not get too cold and that's of course why I needed the the low range thermostat when I set this in the 50s the surface the snakes were actually contacting which I tested frequently with my um, temp gun both while I was setting it up and when I checked on the snakes maintained a temperature that was usually in the mid to low mid 40s to low 50s which is just about perfect and then I used this piece of polystyrene foam with the mylar backing to help make sure I didn't lose too much of this heat when I when I did want heat and that it reflected most of the heat from here back up towards the snakes instead of losing it into the leaf litter and then there's a fairly thick layer of leaf litter under this several inches thick to help um, provide insulation and that kept them at the perfect temperature in my garage during their brumation cycle so by early December my snakes digestive tracts had time had time to clear they had been acclimating to cooler temperatures and they were definitely showing signs of readiness for brumation one of these signs was frequent mating activity so I know it was time to put them down for their nap during brumation I checked on the snakes every week or so I checked the thermostat checked the temperatures of various surfaces inside the, their actual brumation chamber and the external one with my temp gun and I made sure that there was some condensation on the underside of the lid of the container which indicated sufficient humidity as I decreased the temperature of the heat pad from 55 to 50 Fahrenheit, meaning the snake's body temperatures were in the mid 40s to low 40s even, their activity decreased quite a bit. And finally, it seemed like forever, March 1st arrived. Time to wake the snakes. All right, I've been looking forward to this. They went down in early December and it's now March 1st in this recording. Here's my baby quilt. I still have baby blanket, whatever. Now I just have to, oh, lost my light. Okay, I just have to dig a little bit till we find them. And there, there's some snakes right here. Here is, looks like Rufus there. Okay. And they were brewmates. Oh my gosh, they were brewmates. Oh, actually, that was Houdini. This is Rufus. It's been so long. Here you go. You got big. It's been a while since you've seen him. And here oh, Ruby got is big. Ruby. Holy Anna. <laughs> of course, she didn't grow any during her uh, brumation, really, but she's big. And yeah, it's been a while since you've seen them. So let's get them into their new home. Well, not their new home. Let's get them back to their old home. <laughs> All right. Their vivarium has grown in their absence. The lemon button fern is a lot bigger. The Korean rock fern has had its ups and downs, but it's doing okay now. Um, unfortunately, I lost the uh, bird's nest fern. That was disappointing. Filled up their water dish with some fresh water. Checked their uh, basking spot. It's right now at 80. I'm going to warm it up a little bit more later, but I want to do that a little gradually. So for today, I'm going to leave it at around 80 degrees. And I will uh, replace the light bulb with a slightly warmer one later. So that it can be around between 85 and 90. So let's uh, release them back into their home. Let's do uh, Houdini here. Put them back in the vivarium and let them start 
acclimatizing. Whoa, it's not taking him too long to find a hiding spot there in the cork bark. Although he's going rather slowly than normal. Nice. Probably won't take him long at all to find his old uh, hiding places. Probably going to be rearranging some things sometime soon, but not immediately. Okay, let's put Rufus back in. Same spot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's trying to grab onto the cork bark there. That's yeah, fine. He, if he really wants it, he just dropped a leaf. He's got mm. quite a collection in his stomach. Yeah, that ruminating in the leaf litter will do that to you. There he goes. Um, I'm just feeling relieved that everybody's looking good. They look like they have pretty good body weight. Uh, they don't look particularly dehydrated or anything. And here goes Ruby. Well, I thought she was going to take a drink from the water immediately, but no. She's just checking things out. When we first took them out, you probably saw their tongues were just in slow motion. <laughs> Which was kind of fun. It's just, it's great to see that they're doing so well. And now I hope that soon we'll be seeing babies in the next couple of months. As you can see here, the snakes didn't waste any time getting back into their old basking habits. After they had had about a day to acclimate to the warmer temperatures, I tried to offer them some earthworms. As garter snakes have pretty quick metabolisms, and I didn't want them to wait too long if they were actually hungry. But they weren't quite ready for a meal yet. No harm done, though. Our axolotl wasn't about to let those worms go to waste. And I can try again in the next day or two. Garter snakes typically begin breeding activity soon after emerging from brumation. So I'm hopeful that Ruby here will give birth to some baby garters around May or June. If that does happen, would you like to see a video on the newborn baby garters? If so, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday, all about aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell so that you won't miss my next video.